Well, good morning, everybody. So glad to see you all today. Come on, can we give it up for everyone that is here for the very first time? So glad to have you in church today. I know that there's a lot of new faces coming fresh off an amazing Easter weekend. Super powerful. Thousands of people giving their lives uh, to Christ. It's just a truly amazing weekend last week. And I think one of the things I love most about this church, though, is that it's kind of the focus and, and the emphasis on the journey that God wants to take us on. You know, that God doesn't just want us to ask him into our lives, but he wants us to seek him and, and know him more. He wants us to really find freedom in our lives. He wants us to discover exactly why he has us here so that we can live in that and uh, go out and, and make a difference. Those are all steps into really experiencing all that God has for us. And that's kind of what I want to dive into a little bit today. And to kind of unpack this, I want to dive into Ephesians chapter 4. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to start here in verse 11. It says this, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, truly experiencing all that God has for us. And I love what it says in verse 14. It says, Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, blown here and there by the wind of every teaching, and by the cunningness and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Jesus Christ. Today I want to talk about the idea of speaking truth in love, speaking truth in love. Let's pray. Jesus, we want to know you more so that we can go out and make you known. So with all that we have, all that we say, all that we do, would you, amazing King Jesus, have your way in us today because it's on your precious name that we hang every ounce of our hope. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 So a little bit about me, I was raised about two hours north of here in the great city of Huntsville, Alabama by my Indian mama and my redneck daddy. So you all know <laughs> that that was a very interesting household to kind of grow up in. But growing up, my mom kind of took the role of, i say she was more of the lecturing and disciplinarian. And I don't know if any of y'all have a parent that was more like that. My dad was a little more laid back, but she was the one that kind of loved to give the speech love to give the lecture, tell you all that you did wrong, what you can do better next time, and you were going to sit there and listen until she was done. Like I said, my dad was a little more laid back. What he liked to do is that he liked to kind of poke fun at me and my brother whenever we do something like really dumb and we knew we were going to get a lecture. He kind of come in, come in first before my mom, and he would set up what me and my brother called the RYM moments. Because he would walk in and he would say, boys, you better buck your seatbelts. Because your mama about to read your mail. That's what we call these <laughs> RYM moments. And that's exactly what she would do. Like It's like she knew everything we were going to do before we even did it. Like She would say some stuff. I was like, golly, I don't even know what that is. But I feel like I would have done it at some point. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Um, but yeah, so that was, those were always fun interactions. But I'll, like, I'll never forget that at the end of these speeches and every single time uh, my mom would have these talks with us, there's two things that she always said without fail. Two things. And the first one was a question. As she looked us in the eyes and she said, boys, do you know that I love you? Do you know that I love you? And as I like, kind of look back on those interactions that we would have as children, I realized that you know there was a whole lot of truth in those moments. Like She would read our mail. Like, there was a whole lot of truth. But at the same time, there was a whole lot of love. And I think God has been revealing to me the importance in our lives of both truth and love. You might have heard quotes like it or maybe heard different ways. The one that I love to use is that truth without love is too hard to bear, but love without truth is too soft to make a difference. We need both truth and love in our lives. And I feel like as believers and really even as humans, it's not lost on us that love is important. We see it all throughout our lives and human nature, but especially in the scriptures. John 13 said, Jesus tells his disciples that if you love one another, just as I have loved you, then people will know that you follow me. In 1 Corinthians 13, it says that all of these amazing things like knowledge and, and prophecy and wisdom, they're all nothing if we do not have love. We kind of know that love is important, but what I want us to talk about today is that so is truth. Truth is just as equally important in our lives 
with love. And here's why. Truth is important because there is an enemy and he is a liar. That's what the scripture says, that the devil is a liar. From Genesis 3 in the Garden of Eden to the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke and Jesus in the wilderness, we see the devil twisting the words of God to distract people from their calling, to distract people from experiencing all that God has for them. We need truth in our lives because the devil is a liar. And when I look at kind of the world today and I, and I look at my kind of current situation, I look at my own life, I feel like one of the biggest lies that the devil is telling us is that when we make these mistakes and when we fall short, when we sin, and by the way, that applies to all of us, not just the people in this room, not just our church, but but everyone in the world, for all have sinned and fallen short of the God, for, for fallen short of the glory of God. But the devil likes to lie to us that when we make those mistakes that we better hide them. We better keep them in the dark because as long as nobody sees it, then then I'll still be loved. You know, as long as nobody knows what I've, I've done or knows my mistakes, then I'll still be talked to or my reputation will still be intact or I won't hurt, my, myself won't get hurt or maybe someone else won't get hurt by it either. And what we do is that we hide these things to avoid a pain when it's really the only thing that's keeping us from freedom. And what happens is, in one of my, what's in my opinion one of the greatest tragedies in the world is that we hold on to the very thing that Christ died to break through. It's just a lie from the enemy that we believe. And we need the truth of the gospel in our lives. Everything that we celebrated last week in Easter, that Christ died on the cross and his blood was shed for my sins so that I don't have to carry them anymore. And that on the third day he rose in victory so that we have victory over the lives of the enemy. We need the truth of the gospel in our lives to combat the lies of the enemy. So how do we do it? If we take notes, um, I'm going to hit on three points on how we get God's truth in our lives. Three points. Number one is that we need to get into God's Word daily. We need to get into God's Word daily. This book right here, it is infallible. It is inerrant. It is 100% true. It always has been. It always will be. It is truth. But not only is it truth, but it is the actual Word of God. So it's not just a book to read, but it's a voice to listen to. And I feel like some of us need the voice of truth to speak against the lies of the enemy that we've been letting into our lives. We need the voice of truth in our lives. And I don't think we just need the voice of truth just sometimes or when we're believing these lies or every now and then, but I truly believe that for us to combat the lies of the enemy, we need the Word of God in our hearts daily. And here's why. It's because when every morning when I wake up and I start thinking, and every morning when I, I go to my bathroom and I look in the mirror, it's an opportunity for these lies, the devil to try to creep into my mind, creep into my heart, and, and start telling me things about me that God directly in His Word says against. And when we have the Word of God on our hearts, I know that what he, who he says I am, I know what he says about me, I know his truth and his word, and I have it on my heart, and it allows us uh, to be less susceptible to having those lies of the enemy kind of attached to who we are. We need the word of God daily. So number two is that we need to get people in our lives that love God and love us enough to tell us the truth. I'll say that again. We need people in our lives that love God and love us enough to tell us the truth. If you spend enough time at this church, you'll realize that we say very few things a billion times. Here's what I mean about that. Is something that you'll hear constantly is, hey, you need to get in a group. You need to get in a small group. You need to get in my small group. That's a, you need to get in that small group. You need to lead a group. You need to co-lead a group. You need to get in a small group. We hear it all the time around here. I'm going to tell you this, that it's not just said haphazardly. It's not just saying just so we have like a ton of people that are in small groups. No, this house truly believes with everything we have that life change happens in the context of relationships. You need people in your life that love God and love you enough so when maybe you're straying a little bit, you're, these lies of the enemy are kind of sitting on your hearts and, and you're kind of moving away from the calling that God has on your life, those people come and, and speak truth and love into your life and kind of get you back on course. This means the world to me. It truly does because 
you know, my freshman year of college, I had a group of guys. We called ourselves the Broskis. That's what where we were. Y'all know nothing about the Broskis. The Broskis are awesome. But uh, but here's here's something about the Broskis is that we we laugh together. We we cried together. We knew each other's deepest darkest secrets. We knew our greatest failures. We knew our greatest successes. We just did life together. We loved each other. And I'm thankful for that the rest of my life because there was a point in my life where I really got distracted. There was a point in my life where I kind of veered off course and I let things into my life that shouldn't have been there in the first place. And I let them in to try to mask this, this pain and this frustration I was feeling in my life. And I really, I really let it distract me from what God had called me uh, to be. And I'm, I'm forever thankful for those people in my life. Because what they did is, is they said, hey, Robert, bro, like, what's going on with you? Like, we've done life together. I know you. Like, I love you. So why are you making decisions that you usually don't make? And why your attitude? Why is your attitude in certain ways that, that has never been before? Like, what's going on with you, man? Like, the person I see right now is not the, the person that I saw before. And I'm forever thankful for those friends because they loved God. They were seeking after him, and they loved me enough to speak his truth into my life and to get me back on course. And when we need people in our lives that love God and love us enough to tell us the truth. So that we don't get distracted from the great things that God has in store for us. So number one, we need the word of God in our lives daily. Number two, we need people in our lives that love God and love us enough to tell us the truth. And number three is that we need to let Jesus shine into the darkness. We need to let Jesus shine into the darkness. You see, Jesus was the perfect embodiment of both truth and love. And one of the greatest pictures of this, I think, in the entire Bible is in John chapter 4. If you have your Bibles, will you turn there with me in John chapter 4? And in this story, Jesus is approaching this Samaritan woman alone at the well at the middle of the day. And in this interaction and in this conversation that they are having, Jesus is telling her about this living water that can be offered to her. This, this water that will never make her thirsty again, that will fully satisfy all her needs so that she no longer has to keep going to this well. So John, I can just imagine her hearing this and being like, absolutely, like, that's what I want. Like this is this is hard. This is like I want I want something that will fully sustain me. A lot of us are kind of in that place right now that we've been keeping going to the same old things and, and try to find fulfillment. And we hear about this thing that could be offered to us, and we're like, yes, that's what I want. I want that fulfillment. And she even says in verse 15, it says, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty. And then I won't have to keep coming here. To draw water. This is what Jesus said. He, he told her, go call your husband and come back. I want to pause for a moment because this right here is a biblical RYM moment. Jesus is reading her mail. I'll tell you why. It's because Jesus knew that not only did she not have a husband, but she actually had five husbands. And then the man she was currently with wasn't even her husband. And some of us might look in that and look at that situation and say, Jesus, that's harsh. Why do you have to call her out like that? She's just getting water at the well, minding her own business. Obviously, she's there alone, so she already has hurt and pain in her life. Why do you have to do that? But in reality, it's one of the most generous acts of love that he could ever do. It's because Jesus know, knew the truth. And the truth is, is that as long as she had things that were in the darkness, as long as she had things that she was still holding on to, that she would never actually be able to accept the living water. And I feel like that's, a, that's where a lot of us are now, is that there's things in our lives that we're still holding on to. And that Jesus is offering this living water, but we are unable to accept it because our hands are already full. You know, at the, uh, when, earlier when I was talking about these RYM moments, I told you that my mom always told us two things, but I actually only told you one of them. The first one was a question. And she said, boys, do you know that I love you? But the second one was a statement. She looked us in the eyes, she took a deep breath, and she said, the truth will set you free. Boys, the truth will set you free. 
Later, I would find out that she was actually quoting John 8, 31 through 32, which says, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, if you are truly my disciples, then you will know the truth, and then the truth will set you free. And I think there's a lot of us that are believing the lie that we need to hide our mistakes, that where we've fallen short, that nobody can see it. And we're actually hesitant to the truth. We're hesitant to anybody actually knowing because we see it as too harsh. It might be too, too hard for us to bear. A lot of us see it as, as bad news. But I think that's why they call the gospel the good news. And the gospel of the truth of what we celebrated last week is that Jesus is saying, all oh, that guilt, that shame, that pain that you are afraid of, I want it. I died on that cross so that you didn't have to bear it any longer. Are you tired? Are you weary? Are you alone? Are you left unsatisfied? You don't have to keep coming back to this well for fulfillment. All you gotta do is give it to me because it's already paid for. I think that's why they call it victories, that we don't have to fight for these things anymore. The, The battle has already been won on the cross. We need truth in our lives to combat the lies of the enemy because the truth will set us free. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me all across this room? And I feel like there's some people in this room that when we talk about this freedom, when we talk about this good news or maybe even a true relationship with Jesus, that's not something that you've ever really experienced. And in this moment, Jesus is inviting you to experience the fullness of his grace, the fullness of his peace, the fullness of his victory. No matter what you've done, no matter where your background is, no matter what your current situation is, he wants to set you free. And I don't want to embarrass anybody. I don't want to, uh, I'm not going to call you up to the front, just right where you're sitting. I'm going to ask you, if that's you, if you want to experience the fullness, the power of of Jesus Christ. I'm going to count to three. I'm just going to ask you to slip up your hand with every bed how, or every head bowed, every eye closed. When I count to three, we just slip up your hands. One, two, three. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Hands going up all across this room. You can go ahead and sit, slip your hand back down in your lap. I'm just going to I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to invite you to pray this prayer with me if that is you. Pray this with me. Jesus, I need you. I need a real relationship with you. Forgive me for living my life my own way. Today, I ask you to be Lord of my life. I fully surrender my life to you. I believe the truth that you died for my sins, that you rose from the dead, so that I can share in your victory. I believe that from now on, I will no longer walk in darkness, and my life will never be the same. Jesus, I pray for every single person in this room, whether they raised their hand or whether they did not, uh, people making this decision to invite you into their lives. I thank you for that decision that they made. I thank you for the power of the cross that we aren't, we aren't left to figure out this life alone, but we can, we can invite you into our lives and we can have your power, we can have your victory in our lives, Lord Jesus. I thank you for your truth that it speaks against the lies of the enemy. I thank you for your word and who it's, how you just declare who we are in you, Jesus. Well, God, above all else, we just want to know you more so that we can go out and make you known. So with all that we have, all that we say, all that we do, would you, amazing, wonderful, true King Jesus, have your way in us today. It's on your precious and heavenly name that we hang every single ounce of our hope. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.